Welcome back to my channel, the place where I help new and aspiring law students learn the strategies so that you can take control of your law school career and start a lawyering life on your own terms. In case you're new here, I'm Angela Vorpal of AngelaVorpal.com and the Law School Network on Facebook. And over the last year, I have gotten tons of questions from non-traditional law students ranging from how does my experience impact the law school admissions process? What is the experience in law school if you don't come straight from undergrad? And what are the job opportunities looking like once you graduate? And because I did go straight from undergrad to law school, I knew that I was not in a position to answer these questions, but I was sure that I could find people who could. So I posted this on LinkedIn and it got over 29,000 views and over 40 lawyers reached out to me to share their experience as a non-traditional law student who is now doing a variety of different roles as a practicing attorney. So this video is a compilation of their stories, experiences, and advice broken down into the most common questions asked by non-traditional law students. So get ready because I'm so excited for this video and all of the gems packed inside and make sure you stay till the end because I have a really special announcement that I know you're going to love. So with that being said, if you're pumped to dive in, smash that like button and let's go. Question number one, as a non-traditional law student, is it better to go through the full-time day program or the part-time evening program? So here were the responses of the attorneys I spoke with. In terms of the part-time evening program, the lawyers that went that route, some of them made that decision because they didn't really have another choice. They were a major breadwinner for their family and they needed to continue working through law school. Others made that decision because the whole point of getting a law degree was to move up in the company where they already worked, either in terms of a promotion or moving to the legal side. And so they wanted to continue working and being employed by that company as they also worked on their law degree. For those lawyers who did have a choice between the full-time and part-time program and chose the part-time program, some of them said that they did that because they wanted to continue to develop a marketable skill as they made their way through law school. Others wanted to be able to continue to sustain themselves and be able to pay for their daily and monthly living expenses. And others may have worked in a legal environment already as a paralegal, for example, and really enjoyed having that real world connection between what it was they were learning in class and really being able to solidify that in a real world environment. In terms of one of the big advantages of the part-time evening program, they told me that there was a really strong sense of camaraderie among the part-time evening students because most people were in a similar life stage where they had to work full time during the day and they may have also had a family. And so everyone was helping everyone else basically get to the other side of this experience and get through it, which created a really, really neat vibe and energy among all of the students. For the non-traditional students who chose the full-time day program, some of the reasons they gave were wanting to get through the process in three years instead of having it drag out to four. Also wanting to be able to up-level their earning potential sooner so that they could start really saving money or investing money and really start seeing that difference in salary earlier on. One of the lawyers also made a comment about the age range because at age 34, she assumed that she would have other full-time day students around her age when in fact she realized she was the oldest one in the class and that the majority of students were still in that 22 to 27 year old age range. And so at the beginning, she felt like an outsider. She was very nervous that she wouldn't be included. But she said to her very pleasant surprise, they absolutely adopted her in to their social circle, to their social group. So she realized that as long as she brought an energy of the age difference not being a big deal, that everyone else in her class also followed suit and just didn't see it as an issue at all. How does being a non-traditional law student play in the law school admissions process? This question got consistent responses across the board, which was, it is a positive. Having work experience makes you a stronger law school candidate. And some people actually waited to apply to law school for strategic purposes, either to create more space between a lower undergraduate GPA, to increase the amount of work experience they have so that there is a stronger, more well-balanced application to law school. Some people use that time to study for the LSAT and others just really wanted to get clear on whether law school was something that they wanted to do. But 
across the board, more work experience made for a stronger law school application. Another common theme that came up in all of the conversations was the importance of having a why law school answer, both in terms of law school admissions and in terms of interviews while in law school for a job. And everyone consistently said that it needed to be something more than just, I want to go to law school to make more money, or I want to go to law school because I'm bored with my current job. They really needed to see and really were looking for a passion or an interest in the pursuit of a legal career itself. And so here were some of the answers that the attorneys I spoke with gave when they were asked that question. One attorney said that they wanted to make sure that they were challenged intellectually, that they had reached the peak of what they were able to do in their current position and they wanted to push outside their comfort zone and be challenged intellectually. One lawyer said that they had always wanted to go to law school, but that life responsibilities had made it impossible until now. Someone else said that they wanted to first get experience in the legal industry as a paralegal to make sure that they enjoyed the practice of law before they made the leap into law school. Someone else said that they wanted to get experience in the business world to get to know themselves a little bit more as a professional, as someone working within a team to get a sense for the types of environments and type of work that they enjoyed doing. And someone else said that they saw some serious mismanagement on the legal side in a corporate atmosphere and an educational atmosphere that if they had had a really capable attorney working with them, they could have avoided some really serious consequences. So regardless of what your why is, make sure it's really clear and compelling to show that you are interested in pursuing a law degree and why. Another big question I got from a lot of non-traditional law students was how does being a non-traditional law student play out in the interview process? How does it affect your employment opportunities when you graduate? And so it seemed to kind of break down into two categories from the conversations that I had. So it seemed that if you were five years or less out of college, that that experience was viewed by legal employers as a positive thing. So the fact that you were more mature, the fact that you had professionalism, the fact that you had experience working in an office environment, working with clients, working with colleagues, all of those pieces were viewed very positively. That being said, for people who were more than 10 years out, so people who were true second career attorneys, there was some definite stigma and some definite hesitancy on the part of some legal employers to hire them. And so specifically talking about bigger law firms, bigger legal employers going through that OCI or on-campus interview process at the beginning of their second year of law school. And so a lot of these lawyers said that especially with those bigger law firm interviews, especially during OCI, they felt like they were dismissed out of hand and that they did experience a lot of bias for not sort of fitting in that very traditional first year associate mold, where it was a young to mid 20 something who didn't have a lot of prior experience, who would be open to doing the grunt work and sort of working really long hours without question. And so what they communicated to me was if you were interested in going the bigger law route to make sure that you're communicating two things. One is the professionalism and really interacting with, with the employers and the interviewers as peers and as colleagues so they can kind of visualize you working with them in the future. And the second piece is to really make sure that you're communicating that humility and willingness to learn because a lot of the stigmas and a lot of the fears come from this assumption that people who have been professionals for over a decade are not going to be interested in doing grunt level work, are not going to be interested in taking commands or taking direction from someone who's younger than them, who's not going to be interested in sort of starting all the way from zero. And so if that is something you're interested in, the consistent advice was to make sure that you communicate that and make sure that they know that you are completely open to crafting your expertise from zero, just like all of the other first year associates. Another really helpful piece of advice that I heard from a lawyer who was 39 when she started law school and who had worked an entire other career prior to going to law school was that in order to sort of break that bias or break that hypnosis that a lot of larger law firms have about non-traditional law students is to really lean into networking. And so networking of course is helpful for everyone, but especially as a second career law student, it's helpful to sort of start having those conversations, those informational interviews, those interactions at your local bar association 
so that people can see you as a real person and see the professionalism and maturity coming through. And they know you, or at least know your face before they interview you. So they don't sort of dismiss you out of hand just by looking at your resume or just by looking at your age in the interview. And so those were two really helpful pieces of advice. And I wanted to go ahead and pass those on to you guys. And also really reemphasize the fact that this is a very specific sort of hierarchical structure a big law firm has and is not the same experience that you would get if you were interviewing at a mid-sized or smaller law firm or a different type of legal employer who values the experience a lot more and who will give you that client contact or those more substantive job opportunities earlier on in your career. The next question that came up in our conversation was how, if at all, does that first job out of law school change if you are a non-traditional law student? And across the board, those who worked in bigger law firms out of law school said that they didn't get any preferential treatment, that they started off as a first year associate just like everyone else, despite the fact that they may have worked for years before law school. And so their advice was just to be aware that you will be assigned sort of the grunt work, sort of the lower level tasks even if you were a professional in another career prior to law school. And because of that, because of sort of that hierarchical structure, they also commented that a lot of the other law students in their class opted to go to a smaller law firm or a mid-sized law firm where they could get those substantive opportunities faster. They could get that client facing contact sooner. And so that wound up being a really good fit for a lot of the non-traditional law students who didn't want to spend five years sort of working their way up the totem pole. Another common first job out of law school that they mentioned was that a lot of the evening students in particular that went through law school knew that they wanted to start their own law firm. That was the impetus for getting their law degree. And so a lot of non-traditional law students went ahead and started their own law firm so that they could run their business the way that they wanted to. Another interesting piece to this response was that one of the lawyers who was a career paralegal before she went to law school, who had worked in law firms for over seven years, was not treated any differently than any of the other first year associates. And in fact, when she went to get a job at the law firm where she was a paralegal, a lot of the partners had a really difficult time not treating her as a paralegal. And so that was actually a really uncomfortable environment where in trying to sort of make that jump from paralegal to associate, there was this image sort of burned in the minds of a lot of the partners that saw her as a paralegal and never really made the jump to seeing her as an associate. And so again, going in and just knowing what that perception is and what those job responsibilities are likely to be is really important so that you can, of course, choose a first graduation job that fits what it is you're looking for in this next step in your career. The last question that I asked all of the lawyers I spoke with was, what advice do you have for other non-traditional students thinking about going to law school? And here's what they said. So one of the lawyers said that she was completely naive with respect to the law school rankings and what those meant and how they sort of translated into landing your first job out of law school. And she really didn't understand or realize how hard that very first job is to get and that she would have been much more proactive in networking if she had realized that was the case so that she could meet other people in her local bar association so that she could start making those connections early and position herself really well for that first job after graduation. Another one of the lawyers said that he wished he had known how important and how big a deal the LSAT and undergraduate GPA numbers were in law school admissions and how it really is a numbers game for so many of the admissions decisions. And so he said that it was a really good move on his part to put some distance in between his undergraduate GPA and applying to law school so that he could beef up his application with experience and that he wished he would have spent more time studying for the LSAT because every one of those points he knew would have helped him not just in admissions, but also in scholarship money. Someone else I spoke to said that she was blown away by how all encompassing one L year was. And so she was working full time and going through a full time JD program and didn't realize how much they expected you to be on call available for mandatory meetings and, and orientation sessions all the time and that she wished she would have known that and that maybe that would have changed her decision to go to the full-time day program instead of the part-time evening program. 
Someone else who did decide to go to the part-time evening program mentioned that four years is a long time. And although she was glad that she was able to continue making money for her family during that four-year period, that if she could have gone to the three-year full-time day program, she would have just to be able to get out that one year sooner. Another lawyer who went through the evening program gave the advice that if you are working full time to not put unnecessary pressure on yourself to participate in the traditional extracurriculars that come up 2L and 3L year. So things like law review, moot court, mock trial, to not put that pressure on yourself to work full time and sort of participate as a quote unquote traditional law student. You just have to let those things give so that you can do everything you need to do to get your law degree, to continue to support your family and really get through the process. And the last lawyer I spoke with said that he wished he had known how common it is to be a non-traditional student, especially someone going through the part-time evening program. He said that he assumed it was a very small community and only after going through the process did he realize how big a group that really was, mainly because people don't really talk about it after they graduate. They don't really broadcast it very much. And so if you are a non-traditional student thinking about going through the law school process, definitely connect with and reach out to other people who have done it before because they tend to be very fiercely loyal to that community and it's a wonderful way to build those personal and professional relationships. And speaking of building your personal and professional communities, I'm so glad you guys stayed till the end because I have a really exciting announcement. Every single one of the lawyers that I spoke to in making this video have agreed to be a resource and a point of contact for any non-traditional student who has any follow-up questions or wants additional insight into the law school process coming from a second career. So I'm going to drop their names and their LinkedIn URLs in the description below this video. So definitely reach out to them and definitely take them up on their offer. And with that, that is all for this week's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you guys some of the insights you were looking for. And I could not encourage you strongly enough to reach out to these amazing people who have made themselves available to you. And with that, guys, that's all for this week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.